I heard this Akshay Menon from Famous Bazaar. Welcome you all to our uh, exclusive Fun Magic interview series. And today we I have uh, Ms. Sonam Srivatsa with us, who is the CEO and founder of Pride Research. Hello, ma'am. Hello. So let me move to the very first question. Mm-hmm. So we have come to the we have started the new financial year. So how do you sum up FY twenty twenty four and how it has been for Com? See, I think FY twenty four has been an amazing year <laughs> for everybody. Uh, so some of the strategies you know that we have been running have had a spectacular run during that time see our pms is only 8 months old we were able to launch it that year i think it was a great time to launch a pms uh, you know our factor fund ended up doing really well in these 8 months many of the strategies that we run outside of pms were able to deliver you know very very uh, high returns during that period so obviously it was a great year um and you know we've seen transition also i think in the beginning of the year you had a lot of this infrastructure manufacturing play that picked up small caps are growing like anything and then slowly the shift has happened towards that the large cap and quality stock so it's been a very insightful and interesting year and i think everybody is happy with the last year last year could see small mid cap has also outperformed yeah yeah no definitely the- Fund as well. So this is more like follow-up question to the previous one. Financial uh, year 2025. Uh, it seems like more eventful year. We'll have elections coming up, yeah. and after that we have interest rate hikes. So what is your outlook on it? I think definitely it will be a very interesting year. <clears throat> elections, uh, you know, typically markets have trended before and after the elections, but you never know what happens. So you know, it will be a very exciting thing to watch out for in the next couple of months when the results come out. Uh, along with it i think rate cuts are having a huge impact so definitely election will be a play uh, but uh, there are bigger things at play also you know when the rate cuts happen in the us it will imp- have the impact on the overall economy but that rate cut is being delayed day and day again right along with it you know there are number of things the valuations are also a little bit worrying we have to watch out for the earnings the geopolitical tension or everywhere right. so see the outlook still remains positive i think india is going to do well But uh, we also have to be cautious because there's so many things coming up. Right? So when you say India is doing well, so what kind of a strategy do you think will work out for investors? See, I think uh, it has to be a healthy mix of a few strategies. Uh, see, in a growing com- country like India, following a momentum factor extra works really well, right? Which is uh, working with the trend and following the trend. It it works really well, but. Uh, in like the current scenario is telling us that you know just doing that will not be enough right you have to understand the actual valuations of the company you have to understand what is the quality what is the consistency of their company's profitability what are the prospects how is the market receiving that company so there are various things that you have to combine and especially right now we have to have a focus on the fundamentals uh when we pick up stocks right yeah when you talk about fundamentals we have three strategies which is alpha factor fund and factor hedge mm-hmm. how uh, how are these three strategies different and who are the ideal investors for these uh, these strategies right so uh, yeah so we have three strategies the one we talk the most about is our factor fund right yeah. then i have factor hedge which is more like a momentum strategy and then i have alpha which is also momentum strategy so only and only 10 stocks see right research uh, you know a lot of people know us outside of pms and we are very well known for our momentum investing strategy right? we have done momentum really well so uh, i have couple of momentum investing strategies uh, momentum uh, which is the factor fund hedge that follows the momentum factor and you know you can expect very good returns in a bullish market and sort of stable returns in a volatile market uh, alpha is a high risk version of that so only very concentrated yeah. 10 stocks will give you very sharp returns when when it's doing well when it's not doing well you see volatility there also so that is uh, you know a very clearly a high risk strategy and then my factor strategy is unique that i am combining momentum along with other factors so you know it's not just about price trend but also combining that with quality or value or you know other factors that we look at and we tactically shift across the board yeah when you say uh, alpha being is concentrated so mm-hmm. how does how does it work when the market has a downside See, it would uh, typically ten stocks and concentrated momentum stocks. So what happens in a downturn is people would start to they become aversive to our momentum, yeah. right? So they say see an impact, right? So therefore, it could be high risk. But you know what we have typically seen actually is the moment the market sort of picks up, it would climb the fastest. Right? So that is that is something that we are very assured about. Now, uh, see, you ask me who are these strategies yeah, suitable exactly. for? So see, my factor strategy is a moderate risk strategy. I uh, give it to people with a sort of moderate risk horizon, 
uh, then uh, factor h is also relatively mo uh, moderate but it is purely momentum so people have to understand that it's following the prices only alpha is a high risk strategy yeah. Uh, so typically when a client comes to us aksha we don't just give them one strategy we are able to split their allocation across uh, schemes right okay so let's say i have somebody who is looking at a moderate to high risk exposure they want you uh, know they'll take a majority of let's say factor fund let's say 80% 20% they'll put it into alpha to see okay. get a flavor of high risk investing also and take advantage of you know the longer term returns that can come out of that strategy right That's so we can split it across the board we also have a debt scheme actually mm -hmm. in a pms so let's say i have somebody who wants to take lesser risk so i'll create a split between a debt and this okay. so we can customize the allocation for clients too being it a con strategy mm -hmm. and con is relatively new to india so it's been like um, it's been very few years so con has become popular and when you see global con it's very popular mm -hmm. outside so where do you see the gap and it's been 8 months since you're in the market of con here yeah. i mean in pms so how do you No, I think see, quant has definitely been there in the market, uh, in a in a very small size in India. Uh, I actually worked in a quant famous ten years ago, so it's not uh, like it's it's relatively new. But yeah, I think uh, it hasn't seen that pick up. I think uh, very slowly people gradually are now adapting towards it. So I'll tell you about my journey. I've been in the quant space all my life, right? So ten years ago, nobody was talking about quant. Yeah. But uh, but five years ago, when I started right research. it was again very strange you know people i would talk to they didn't know what quant is but suddenly uh, once you know but slowly we started you know people you know especially in a city like bangalore people are coming from a tech background they understand data numbers they trust technology right yeah. so when they uh, when they understand our philosophy and they understand that we are doing quant in a very proper fashion so that also attracts us so it's not just about performance people are actually attracted to the philosophy which makes sense to them right so uh, i think things are changing and i am sure it's going to get way bigger you know i'm at least for the quant piece is going to get more significant piece of the pie yeah. and uh, saying that quant is being a data driven thing mm. and uh, if there is a short term correction but we are looking for long term investment so how does that gap been uh, answered by quant no see i think again not every quant is similar actually mm -hmm. right so somebody might have a quant strategy but they might not do very short term churn right they might still hold stocks for longer term in any correction what you have also seen is a few quant people who tend to have very very strict stop losses and all of yeah. this which sometimes you know in corrections would lead to a sort of a lot of sell off selling stocks and buying stocks and lot of turnover so i think uh, there are different ways of doing it i think uh, you know at the end of the day when we are doing pms akshara we are trying to generate long term profit right and uh, the returns don't come by buying stock today and selling tomorrow right the long term returns come by holding stocks for the longer term yeah, that's, so that's when wealth creation yeah yeah so so whatever strategy that you are following which you are doing a lot of churning that doesn't help so therefore we uh, in our strategy we don't end up having a extremely high churn we do buy and sell stocks right we are not uh, passive but uh, we don't uh, do it uh, you know very rapidly we are quite, uh, relatively patient so uh, one of the interviews only to suppose that mm -hmm. you mentioned that considering alternative data and in investment decisions mm -hmm. so what do you mean by that alternative data no no i think that's been a very interesting topic <laughs> of discussion uh, uh, see uh, like i was saying that uh, you know if you take your decision just based on financial data the financial data comes after a quarter no yeah. it's not uh, immediately it's not immediately yeah. it doesn't represent the potential of the stock today but you would see that you know whenever some result you know when if a company is going to post good good results the stock price starts moving before yeah. that right yeah. it's not like after results only so how do you capture that price movement you have to have a understanding on what the uh, company is doing right now right so a lot of the times you would see uh, certain metrics right like say uh, m and a activity the company has done uh, come out in the news or sometimes you know, you would see uh, suddenly the company has a location where flights are now getting a lot of traction in terms of flights coming in and out yeah. in terms of e-commerce platform you can see a lot of traffic going to this particular site so those type of things are are metrics that are not there in the traditional data right and now with the whole advent of gen ai it's very easy to analyze that data and come up with signal right so just like uh, you know i get a signal ki this is the eps 
I can get a signal that okay, this is the sentiment about the stock, or this is the red flag that was that the red flag was, uh, and then I can use it into my system, right? Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. way more true. But uh, that's how the uh, general count works. Mm -hmm. So how how does that make you different in the market from other count strategies? Uh, no, I think everybody has a unique way of doing it. Even if you know everybody is following, let's say, momentum investing strategy, they will all do it differently. Even if everybody is doing value investing using quant, everybody will have their own flavor to it. Uh, I really believe that the quant that we are doing is uh, looking at a very comprehensive set of factors. We are doing risk management extremely well, right? Yeah. We have various checks and balances in place in our strategy. And we are constantly improving. We are trying to do the best for the client. And uh, our system has been extremely reliable for five years. And that is the benefit that we bring to the table. And uh, so I think that's what we're doing. And, uh, you know, anybody else who's putting that honest effort, you know, we'll also see it do well, right? Yeah, when it comes to cont, of course, the human interaction is very limited. Mm -hmm. In that case, when it comes to cont, the human interaction part is very limited. It's all about AI. So... Do you think uh, the, the trust from the investors come in because you don't go meet companies on, on a day to day basis like other like other equity fund managers do? Hmm. So, do you think there's any uh, glitch uh, over the investors? No, I think see, first thing, Akshara, is you have to make sure that you have high quality data. Right? If you don't yeah. have data which is good, then you know your system is not going to work. And now, if you have high quality data, I think uh, see, it's not uh, it's not like there's no human intervention. So even understanding, let's say, uh, the valuation of the stock, we have to, you know, create that signal. You have to put it in the system, and then you have to sort of play around with the data and see if I'm doing this correctly or not. And when it looks like okay, I've created a nice formulation of the system that will do well, then I take it out. It becomes independent, and I rely on its judgment. So we actually work really hard on building these, uh, you know, models, right? You enrolled yourself for the World Con University mm -hmm. back in 2016, so you could share us a few uh, like experiences. No, no, definitely. See, for me, uh, you know, I had been working in the con space for more than six, seven years when I started that program, and for me, it was uh, a good way to sort of refresh all my learning. So it's a very structured course, week on week. You have to submit assignments online. I think it might have changed. I was in one of the first batches of that course. Okay. But uh, every week on week, they have assignments to submit. A lot of it is practical. Uh, you have very good interaction with the with the instructors. Very good course content, not just about con, but about markets, right? You also have to learn the markets and the factors. They give you a flavor of uh, AI and ML algorithms also. It was a great, uh, you know, sort of experience for me to stru structure yeah. my knowledge. I think various other such programs are coming in Akshara. We are also thinking of doing something to sort of promote quant investing in India. And I think there's so much demand by by people and students in India who actually want to learn this. And I think, you know, we really have to promote that. Right? Yeah, that's true. And with that, we've come to the end of the session. We'll look for one more question. But first, so like, we all, we all, already, we all know that your mm -hmm. calendar is always booked. And you keep planning. <laughs> and how does it, uh, how, does, how do you make time? And how does A help you? in making time um so uh, yeah i think it gets a little bit busy for me but i have a very good team i think uh, you know so uh, whenever i am out i have people i can rely on who can who can sort of look at things and you know we sort of try to structure things so that you know we have sufficient time to focus on the research part of things where we invest time with our strategy um and yeah i think we use ai quite a bit in this right so i use uh, you know a lot for a lot of for a lot of content generation i use ai i make use of those tools i use uh, you know i use uh, ai for some of my meetings so i have meeting order that uh, look at the meeting <laughs> give me summary and that makes uh, life way easier uh, and i think so many interesting tools that are coming up right uh, that so the incorporate days are coming, like machine over man these are coming up yeah, yeah, I hope uh, very soon uh, they will have uh, AI that can replicate that in this interview. <laughs> very soon. Yeah, that yeah. will happen very soon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So thank you, ma'am, for that. Yeah, for the end of the session. Thank you for your time.